All right, biology students, welcome back. Um, we are talking about cellular respiration today. So we have already discussed photosynthesis and in photosynthesis in that lesson, we mentioned that the sun is the ultimate source of energy. Um, and then from that sunlight, from that light energy, autotrophs like plants, things that create their own food, convert that sunlight into sugar or glucose is what we're going to refer to it as. Um, and then consumers like you and I eat this glucose, we consume this sugar, and then our cells are going to be able to use that sugar for energy. The problem is, is our cells can't use glucose directly as a source of energy. It has to first be converted into a usable form of energy um, that we call ATP. So the process of actually getting the glucose into a usable form that our cells can use is called cellular respiration. Um, so you can see here in the picture at the bottom of the screen, we have sunlight or light energy, which is the ultimate source of energy. Uh, we've talked about photosynthesis, how plants can use that light energy to create glucose or sugar. Um, and then we consume that sugar or that glucose. Our body cells go through cellular respiration. And through cellular respiration, we generate the energy or ATP needed to power our cells. So today's focus is on that second step that's cellular respiration. So we're going to do a deep dive into cellular respiration and how our body cells actually create this energy. Um, before we start talking about the actual process of cellular respiration, I do want to mention ATP. So we have talked about it a lot already. It's been, it's been mentioned a little, but we haven't actually talked about the structure um, and function of ATP and its importance. I would say ATP is the most important molecule that we talk about in biology. So ATP is uh, an abbreviation that stands for adenosine triphosphate. It is the energy carrying molecule of the cells. So you can think of ATP as fuel for your cell. And just like your car can't run without fuel, your cells cannot run without ATP. So ATP is used to power all types of cell processes. Um, some we've talked about before. So in the last unit, in our cells unit, we talked about active transport. Um, we also talked about signaling. Um, and then next unit, we're going to talk about protein synthesis, which is a huge part of what the cell does. So we know that the cell's main job is to make proteins does this through protein synthesis, and that process also needs power or ATP. So if you look at the screen, the image we have here, the structure of an ATP molecule, it's made up of three parts. So we have an adenine, we have a sugar ring, which we call a ribose, and then it's called adenosine triphosphate because there are three phosphate groups. Now, these lines represent stored chemical bonds, uh, and there's a lot of energy stored in these bonds. So what happens is this adenosine triphosphate, if one of these phosphates are broken off or split from the ATP molecule, then we no longer have adenosine triphosphate. What we're going to get is adenosine diphosphate um, because we only have two phosphate molecules. Now, what this does is it generates a lot of energy. So I'm not sure if you discussed this in your physical science class, um, but in physical science, you probably talked about the fact that when bonds are broken, it generates tons of energy in, case, in some cases, and um, especially with uh, adenosine triphosphate becoming adenosine diphosphate. So those bronze bonds are going to be broken through hydrolysis, um, and we're going to get lots of energy. All right, so ATP production can either be aerobic or anaerobic. So when we say aerobic, we mean with oxygen. If you think about exercise, that might help you remember. And then anaerobic is going to be without oxygen. And we are going to get into more detail in the next lesson um, where we talk about fermentation. So I'm just going to kind of let this marinate right here. All right, so now let's talk about cellular respiration. So cellular respiration is the main process that converts glucose into ATP. Remember, 
when we eat something, carbohydrates, um, we cannot, our bodies cannot use those carbohydrates, cannot use that glucose as energy. It has to be converted into ATP first. So who's going to do cellular respiration? Um, plants, animals, and other eukaryotes. And it is a common misconception that plants do not do cellular respiration. Um, a lot of times students will come to me and I give a pretest and or pre-quiz and um, I put true or false, plants do not do cellular respiration. And a lot of times students will say true. Um, and the reason why is because you're taught plants undergo photosynthesis. And so um, that is true. Plants do undergo photosynthesis, but they also undergo cellular respiration. So plants, animals, and other eukaryotes. All right, so where is this going to happen? This is going to happen in the mitochondria. So we have already discussed this before in our cells unit. We said the mitochondria is like the powerhouse of the cell, and now we know why, because it generates ATP. All right, so cellular respiration can be summarized with this equation. Um, so just make sure, just like with photosynthesis, you need to know this equation. Um, and if you already know the equation for photosynthesis, this is easy to remember because it's just flipped. So the products of photosynthesis are the reactants for um, cellular respiration. All right, so we've got glucose um, and oxygen that are going to be the inputs or the ingredients or the reactants. And then that's going to generate ATP or energy. Uh, carbon dioxide is a byproduct and water is also a byproduct. So glucose and oxygen are our reactants. That's what's put into the chemical reaction. And then our products are carbon dioxide and water. Um, typically, energy is not considered to be a product. Uh, energy is not created or destroyed. So it's not actually produced. It's just converted from one form to another. So that's why we say, really, that ATP is not a product. All right, so there's three steps of cellular respiration. There's like a prep stage, which we call glycolysis. Then we, we move into the Krebs cycle, which is the first official stage of cellular respiration. And then we end with the electron transport chain. Um, now, each of these steps can get really complicated. So I'm just going to give you the high points. We're just going to hit the basics. And then um, you may be asked, if you're taking a more advanced class, you may be asked to, do, to dig a little deeper into each of these steps. Um, as you can see from the picture, each of these steps are done or performed in different areas of the cell. So glycolysis is going to happen in the cytoplasm. Krebs cycle is going to take place in the matrix, the mitochondrial matrix, and then electron transport chain is going to happen in like the folded inner membrane of the mitochondria. So let's go through each step one by one, um, and hopefully you've got your notes in front of you and you're going to write this down. Um, so I just kind of took each step of cellular respiration and broke it down into what I believe is the most important, the highlight. All right, so glycolysis, remember that's the prep stage. Uh, where does it occur? Well, it takes place in the cytoplasm of the cell. Um, what goes in? Glucose is going to go in. And then it's going to generate two ATP molecules, some high energy electrons, and then um, some broken down glucose. So what's going to happen here is glucose is going to be taken in. It's going to be broken down. So glucose is made up of six carbons. It's going to bro be broken down into two three carbon pieces, and we call these pyruvates. So glucose will be broken into two pyruvates. And then what's going to happen is those pyruvates are going to go into the Krebs cycle, which is the next step we'll talk about, um, and help the Krebs cycle do its thing. Now, in the process, a little bit of ATP is going to be made, and some electrons are going to be made. And those electrons are actually going to go ahead and move to the electron transport chain to help power that stage. Um, and the ATP is just going to be generated as a byproduct. You do need to know, make sure this is in your notes, glycolysis is an anaerobic process, which means oxygen is not required for glycolysis to take place. All 
right, now this first official step of cellular respiration, which is the second step in the overall picture, is the Krebs cycle. So the Krebs cycle occurs in the mitochondrial matrix, which in our picture here is the little squiggly line inside of the mitochondria. Uh, what goes in? Well, the pyruvates that were just created in glycolysis, which we're referring to as the broken down glucose, that's what's going to go in. And then what's going to come out, we're also going to get two more ATPs, some electrons that again are going to move on to the electron transport chain to help power that process. And then we get a byproduct of carbon dioxide. So just to recap, the glucose um, that was broken down in glycolysis as pyruvate is going to go into the Krebs cycle. It's going to help power the Krebs cycle. A little ATP is going to be made. Um, there's going to be some more high energy electrons that are produced that are going to move into the electron transport chain. And you also need to make sure that you know Krebs cycle is different from glycolysis because the Krebs cycle is actually an aerobic process. So it does require oxygen. And you can see here from the picture, you have your pyruvates that were made during glycolysis that are going to go into this cycle. This cycle is very complicated. So again, if your teacher is requiring that you go into this a little deeper, you might have to do some more um, investigation to get all of this information. But for my students, you just need to know that um, carbon dioxide is a byproduct. All right, the third official step of cellular respiration is the electron transport chain. This is also going to happen in the mitochondria, but more specifically in the inner membrane, which is like the folded part here. Um, electrons are going to go in to the electron transport chain. And remember, those electrons are coming from glycolysis and from the Krebs cycle. So we've got some high energy electrons that are going to move in. Um, from glucose and oxygen. And look how much energy is produced during electron transport chain. So 32 to 34 ATP molecule, molecules are going to be produced. So lots more energy than with glycolysis and Krebs cycle. Um, and then water. Water is also produced. So this, I'm not sure that this, these two, three sentences do this stage justice. It is so much more complicated than this, but um, if I just had to summarize it in three sentences, here they are. So what happens during electron transport chain? Well, energy is transferred to a chain of proteins in the inner membrane of the mitochondria, and these proteins are going to be used um, as energy that's going to pump hydrogen ions against the membrane and ATP and water is going to be formed in the process. Um, this process, just like Krebs cycle, is aerobic, meaning oxygen is required. All right, so quick summary. This is, cellular respiration is a chemical reaction. So when you have chemical reactions, you have reactants, which are like ingredients. So things that are going into the reaction, and then you have things that are produced, which we call products. It all starts with glucose. Remember, glucose is a reactant. The whole goal of cellular respiration is to convert this glucose into something that our cells can use. So it's got to create ATP from this glucose. Um, so it happens in three stages. We have glycolysis, which is the prep stage. And in glycolysis, we're going to get a product of ATP for energy. We're also going to get some high energy electrons. And you can see here, in the image, those electrons are going to jump the Krebs cycle and just go straight to the electron transport chain. They're going to help power that process. Two pyruvates are going to be formed that are going to move into the Krebs cycle. So the Krebs cycle is step two. Carbon dioxide and more ATP is produced. Some electrons are also produced. And you can see from the picture, those electrons are going to jump to the electron transport chain. And so the electron transport chain is the third step of cellular respiration. It's going to generate um, water and energy. 
It does require oxygen, so you can see oxygen is a reactant that's needed to fuel the electron transport chain, um, and then we get that water and that ATP. Um, now, you're going to have a net gain of up to 38 ATP molecules, so lots of energy being produced here. Remember, we had two ATPs that were produced during glycolysis, um, two during Krebs cycle, and then anywhere from 32 to 34 ATPs produced during the electron transport chain. So one more time, this is the process of cellular respiration. It's how our cells convert glucose into a usable form of energy that powers all the cell processes.